first thing we're going to talk about today is the movement of solutes. Um, so there's two basic ways that solutes can move. Now this is not, I'm not really talking at this point about, I'm just talking generally. I'm not talking about across a membrane or in any particular situation. It's just the way um, molecules can move or, or atoms can move. So one is called bulk flow. Um, bulk flow is the unidirectional movement of a substance. So I always kind of um, think of this as like the Ichitukni. Um, if you went down the Ichitukni in tubes and you put a tube in, you're gonna go with the direction of the river um, because the water is flowing in one direction and any entry into a bulk flow will take you in that direction. So this is in one, a, a unidirectional kind of flow. Now there's some examples um, in cells, for example, cyclosis, which is the movement of chloroplasts around the outside edge of a plant cell. Um, your blood in your bloodstream is basically unidirectional, that is away from your heart and back towards your heart, uh, depending on which vessel that you are in. Um, and uh, so those are two uh, basic examples. Another type of movement is called diffusion. And diffusion is the movement um, of a substance from a high to low concentration. So um, I, we use these little brackets here to indicate concentration. This will be a nice uh, shorthand when we are going through all the different ways that things can move um, because I can indicate whether it's a high or a low concentration or I can tell you what's in concentration um, by those little brackets. And when something is moving from high to low concentration, we basically say it's moving either down a gradient or with a gradient. Now diffusion happens, um, it, it happens uh, just spontaneously. Um, say for example, um, if you had a beaker of water and you had, uh, that water would diffuse off into the air. So in that case, it would have to change states of matter it would take energy to do it, but it's still gonna happen uh, whether you provide that energy or not. In other words, it will take the energy from the surrounds uh, to do that. Um, so we, we kind of talked about this before when we were talking about evaporation of water. So that's one type of diffusion. If you put like a drop of um, ink in a beaker, that water, that ink would spread out in the beaker eventually and make the beaker one color. In other words, the molecules are gonna spread out as far from each other as they possibly can. So in essence, what diffusion is, is the molecules um, that you have in concentration will bump into each other because of the um, actual movement of the molecules or kinetic energy um, of any substance. And the, that bumping will eventually spread them out so there's the least amount of bumping in the space provided. So diffusion matters about what the space is. For example, if I was doing it in a beaker of water versus a Olympic sized pool, we've got some you know, differences in how that's happening. Sorry about my dog's squeaky toy here. Um, all right, and then um, the other thing is, Tara, cut it out. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, if it, you can do this in uh, changing states of matter, you can do it in a liquid solution, you can do it in a gas, you can do it in a solid even. Things uh, sometimes will diffuse uh, within a solid. Um, so um, diffusion will happen no matter what, space matters. The other thing that matters is temperature. So temperature makes the molecules bump. That is uh, the kinetic energy of a substance will make, or heat of the substance will make the molecules bump into each other faster and therefore the diffusion rate should happen faster. And um, it usually happens the fastest where the concentration or the difference between the concentration gradients is the highest. Once you get uh, close to being almost equal in terms of concentration, then it slows way, way down. All right. So the next subject that we're going to talk about is the movement of substance, substances in and out of a cell. And that will require the crossing of a membrane. Um, that is the cell membrane. So we're going to have a little discussion about the cell membrane and it can either be passive or active. And what we're talking about here 
if it's passive, that will, means it will basically happen by this diffusion process. Um, and no energy is required for that because it's just happening with this diffusion gradient or down a diffusion gradient. Active transports require energy, and this is because something is happening, either it's going against the gradient or it has to move in a part of the cell that is not, um, a, is not able to be, um, you're not able to enter or something like that. So we'll, we'll talk about those different kinds of movements. Uh, there's also, you know, large, uh, it depends on the size of the molecule and such. So we're going to, we'll talk all about these different uh, processes. Um, I'm going to be using this diagram uh, to talk about uh, the, the cell membrane. We're going to go over more um, about the cell membrane, but this is uh, the basic diagram where I have the phospholipid bilayer and proteins dissolved in that bilayer, and I'm going to say what's inside and what's outside. So I'm going to use these, um, this, this basic diagram to talk about all the different processes.